Okay, so here's a boundary condition problem where on one region you've got a dielectric and on the other side you've got a conductor. So the question is asking, given some electric field at a point on the conductor surface, what is the surface charge density rho s at that point, assuming the effective permittivity epsilon is equal to just epsilon naught? So I'll just put these two facts up here. We're looking for rho s. Oops. We're looking for rho s, and we're given this electric field and this this uh, region sound this region setup. Sorry. So, um, what's interesting is they don't tell you anything about what this boundary is like. They don't tell you, oh, you know, it's at x equals zero. So the normal vector is like you know in the x direction. It doesn't tell you any of that stuff. It just says that at some point, any point on this conductor surface that could be infinite or really really small. Um, we want to find the surface charge density rho s. So in order to actually do this question, you need to know a couple of important relationships um, involving the dielectric conductor interface. So the important thing to realize here is we need to talk about how an ideal conductor behaves. So from circuit analysis, you know, if you've got your regular circuit like this, you've got a resistor here, got some other resistor here. If you were to do like nodal analysis on this thing, um, this you'd know that this whole node right here. Sorry, let me do that another color. You'd know that this whole node right here would have the same voltage, basically, right? It would be at the same potential, whether you pick this point this point or this point right here, it'll all be at the same potential. So we're talking, we're saying that this wire here connecting these elements is an ideal conductor. So because it's an ideal conductor, um, we know that it's an equipotential body. So V is the same everywhere throughout the conductor. And because V is the same, if you were to take the electric field of it, if you were to try and take the gradient of something that's a constant, right? Because potential is the same, it's a it's a constant, that would be zero. Right? The the uh, the gradient of a constant would be zero. And because the electric field would be zero, that means a bunch of other stuff. The flux in there would flux density in there would be zero. The charge density in there would be zero. And all these properties happen to be true for um, the conductor side of a conductor dielectric boundary. And these are going to be important to um, solving this problem properly. So once uh, you're comfortable with these ideas, let's translate them into um, some useful formulas to use for this type of question. So because um, no electric field can exist in here. Um, you can basically only get an electric field or electric flux density right outside, right at the surface. Okay, and it also so happens that the you can only that um, I'm going to call E1 uh, the electric field for region one, which is dielectric, and region two is the conductor. Um, the electric field here. Um, it's just going to equal the normal component and the tangential component oh, tangential components of the of e and d are both going to equal 0 okay only normal only normal lines can come out of here straight out of the conductor like that so Knowing that, um, you'll also want to take another look at this relationship that we worked with before. Now here, we got to use this because we're looking for rho s here, right? Um, so what we would we put for D2n uh, if D2n is talking about the 
flux density in the conductor region? Well, we just figured out that the total flux should be zero. Um, and the tangential components of either of these regions would be equal to zero. So if the normal component is zero and the tangential component is zero, that works out. That checks out. That ends up being zero. So we can just say that D1N is equal to rho S. But, hey, again, they didn't say anything about what the conductor surface is like. They didn't say it's like, you know, Y equals 2, rho equals 4, anything. We don't know what the normal direction is. Or at least, well, it's not as obvious. We do know what the normal direction is. Um, the tricky thing is, we know that the electric field is this, is this at that point on the conductor surface. So that must mean that if the tangential component at the surface is zero, then this whole thing, both in the x and z direction, must be normal to the conductor surface. So that means um, you need to take rho s to be epsilon naught electric field in the normal direction. And for that, you'd sub in, uh, because rho s is a scalar, you need to take the magnitude of this. You take the magnitude, so you would go 15 squared plus negative 8 squared, all under a square root. And once you work that out, you would get 0 0.15 nanocoulombs per meter squared. And that turns out to be what your rho s is. So then for the second part of the question, um, it asks you, uh, what does that ask you? <laughs> now it tells you about the region. Uh, now it tells you that region y greater than two is occupied by conductor. If the surface charge in the conductor is that, then find you want to find the flux density just outside. So let's draw another region. Here, let's say this is y equals 2. And they said when y is greater than 2, um, this is y greater than 2, then you are hitting a conductor. Let's say this is uh, region 2, just to keep in time, just to keep uh, consistent with the upper part. And this must be then a dielectric. and region one, we're going to call that. So, um, like we said before, we want to find what's D at the surface here. So we know, again, um, this is still a conductor, an ideal conductor, so uh, E, D, and rho V are all zero in here. And still, only um, the only type of activity coming uh, happening at the surface can be field lines going out out of the conductor because we can't have anything going in. So we've got to have, this is the direction of E and D right here. You'll notice that if Y is ascending up here, then this must be in the direction of negative AY. Okay, so that's important. So if we take another look at the relationship we dealt with earlier, um, D2N is still zero, because it's a conductor. And this is going to be equal to rho S. Rho S is given to us now as um, negative 20 nanocoulombs per meter squared. Okay, So now let's take a farther. Let's <laughs> it's my bad. Let's take a step back. So this is the same as saying um, this is all in whatever the normal direction happens to be um, from the surface that is relevant to this region is equal to negative 20. I'll just forget the nanocoulombs for now, forget the, nano the units for now. Um, but what, so this is the normal vector, right? But uh, the normal vector to this surface that must be the one being applied is in the negative AY direction because none of this stuff can go inside the conductor, right? So let's plug that in, D1N, negative AY, is equal to negative 20. 
All right, so then from here, you can multiply both sides by negative 1. And because you know all of d1 in the normal direction goes in the ay direction, you can then say that this, which is equal to the whole of electric flux density because there's no tangential component, is then equal to your 20 in the ay direction nanocoulombs per meter squared. And that's all there is to dealing with this kind of problem, really. You just have to consider those important relationships that are unique to conductor uh, uh, dielectric bounds, which are uh, there's no n there's no potential. No, sorry, the potential is constant. The electric field is zero. The flux density is zero, and rho v is zero inside the conductor. Which means this relationship boils down to this. Um, and this is true. If you know these two relationships here in the red boxes, you can drive everything else you need to. And if you want to know how to remember that, you'd almost definitely recall how during nodal analysis the potential will be same at a node, which means the potential is the same throughout this ideal conductor. And if you try to take the electric field of a constant, you're going to get zero, this is zero and zero. And then from that, you can derive the rest of the stuff.